Now, the reason that we wanted to get back and do a Being Black Revisit is because, like we said before in the earlier Tar Heel talk, is that we're always going to be black for the rest of our lives and it's not going away. And especially with the especially with the social climate now, with recent events, I think that more than ever, this discussion is so important to revisit. It's important to revisit our thoughts and feelings and attitudes towards what's been going on and what we can do, not only as athletes, but as black people, as people with a platform. When um, George Floyd was murdered, I just wanted to gauge the thoughts on the room about, did we think that this was going to be any different this time? Or were we surprised about the, the fierce supportive reaction in support of the Black Lives Matter movement? For me, I think the most jarring part of it all was that it was caught on camera. You watched the police officer kneel on him and literally end, our, end his life before our own eyes. And that to me was extremely disturbing. And it actually took me probably a week or so to watch the video because I was so numb to the concept that black people, like black lives are lost at the hands of police um, fairly frequent, frequently in America. And it's um, extremely upsetting and it's emotionally um, consuming for me. And I actually remember where I was um, and what I was doing when they made the final verdict for Trayvon Martin's case. And um, I think this was another uh, pivotal moment in my life because uh, it made me uh, deal with what it means to be black in America. And I think seeing that video for a lot of people who aren't black, that was eye opening for them because they would never understand what it actually feels like on an ordinary occasion. So to see it, makes it real for them. And I think I had a little hope that since it was caught up on camera, that people would be more, not accepting, but more willing to invest in it on a long term and be better themselves. For me, I feel like I'm similar to Breen's aspect where I thought back to, I think back to Trayvon Martin. I knew exactly where I was at mm. when the verdict happened. We had a, a big, we had a big, like, all my friends, uh, they, they dads came over and we had kind of wanted, like we watched it, literally we watched it together. Like people would do like a, like in t like a type of sporting event. It was just like, cause it was such an important night. When, and when, you know, I'm from Florida, so it's even bigger deal cause he's from Sanford, Florida. And so we, we sitting there watching, like just hoping like justice is served. And it wasn't that night. And it felt so, it felt so heartbreaking. But like as a younger kid, like, even as like a young black man, like I understood what that verdict meant. It was just like, man, like things are only going to get harder from here. And then that's like one of those like timestamp events. Like you knew where you was at. Like, like you knew what you was doing. Same thing with George Floyd. Like it it hurt because you scroll on Twitter, on on Instagram, on the news, you watch it, and like so many black people die. And that in a, in a similar way, that it almost seems like it's a hashtag for two to four weeks and people keep going because not that we feel like it, it has to happen, but it just happens so much. Because like it definitely shouldn't happen, but it happens so often that people kind of, like Bree said, feel numb to it. And I think I had started to feel numb to it as well. But on that same note, I couldn't ignore it because it was a seven minute video, eight minute video, I'm sorry, eight minute video. And for me personally, I didn't watch it until, it probably took me like a week to watch it. I watched it, I ended up watching it and I was just like, oh my God, like, I don't know how, how people can keep going on after they watch this video, like nothing happened. And I think that's a big reason why change has been made, like not necessarily short term, but long term there will be. I think that's the difference between this event and other events. I never watched it. Uh, I probably got into the middle of it, and um, I just felt like I couldn't get past it. I couldn't watch an innocent man die um, like that. Um, for me, I think I was 11 when Trayvon Martin happened. And to me, I guess I was not mature enough to grasp it. I really didn't understand 
And I remember in 2015 um, with Sandra Bland and all, Blanchard and all of that, um, I remember did a case study on it. And um, I remember I was just haunted by her, um, what's those pictures called when they take uh, her, her mud shot. I was haunted by it. I was just like, wow, like that's, that doesn't look right. She does not look lifeful. And the pictures they posted of her beforehand, how she was smiling and she has a gorgeous smile. And I was like, that's not something happened to her. There's more. And I remember studying on that case. And like, after that, like I became more interested in then George Floyd. And I feel like, especially like my, like our generation, like we grew up like seeing those things. And maybe at one point, like we didn't understand, but now like more things are happening. And now like George Floyd was the ultimate point. Like we're in college, we get, we have a voice, we know how to use it and we can use it. And so I felt like that was like a breaking point. So at that point, I, I didn't see it being like a big game changer, but I knew something big was going to be happening because everyone was at home watching this. Like, there, no one can turn an eye. No one can go and, like, uh, distract themselves from any other activities. Like, we're all at home seeing this. When I was talking to my parents about it, my mom made a really good point, is that it is, it is heartbreaking and terrifying to keep watching Black people die on camera. And it is, it's trauma-inducing for us especially because that could be me, that could be Mike, that could be um, Bree, and that could be Hannah at any given moment. Um, you know, if you have a busted tail light, if you make the wrong turn signal, it could mean the end of your life. And to be able to keep watching that, the fact that we're getting desensitized to murder against our own people is heartbreaking. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, it's almost like it's a necessary thing for people to wake up, like you guys said, for you know, white people and people that aren't black, to realize that this has been going on for, it, this isn't just Trayvon Martin. You know, I think for the earlier generation, it was Rodney King uh, with, with when the video of that came out. And then for the earlier generation before that, it was Emmett Till. And, you know, this has been happening for quite some time. And with the arrival of social media, with the arrival of technology, you know, things like the Arab Spring were able to happen and, you know, protests like these. And I think that being able to have documented evidence of murder and to distribute that wholesale provides a necessary cause for even the most ignorant and apathetic of people to really reckon with the fact that they have been bystanders for so long. And, you know, that's if you are, there's that quote that if you are silent in times of oppression, you are complicit um, in times of oppression. And I think that a lot of people and this is exactly where i'm going with this i think a lot of people are willing to are starting to wake up and starting to realize that and companies like in the brands and entertainment places like the nba is allowing players to put different slogans on their uh the back of their jerseys the ncaa will be allowing the same thing and really what i'm trying to figure out now is moving forward I think that athletics and social politics are sort of inexorably linked to each other and they have been for quite some time and especially now more than ever with the active voices that both black and white athletes are having in these discussions and able to participate and use their platform. What do you think the next step for athletes at the collegiate level is? Do you think that social media is still the most important thing in terms of speaking out or using actionable change, like putting different slogans on your back and using the post-game pressers to speak on different issues and advocate for certain issues? I think um, social media, specifically like Twitter, because it's like an in-the-moment comment, I think that gives us power to use our voice and for our opinions to be spread across the country or even the world in a matter, matter of moments. And I think that's powerful. So um, for me, particularly, I found my voice kind of um, among the uh, George Floyd events because I have felt more compelled to be better on my part. Um, like, how am I advocating for my own people um, if I'm not out in the streets um, protesting or being loud about it on Twitter and putting pressure on these entities that oppress black people. So um, I definitely do think social media is a great tool to continue using our voices and inspiring others. Um, and I just hope that I can continue doing that um, going forward and um, just pulling people along into the movement so that it becomes um, powered by numbers, I guess. So.
Hmm. Yeah, I definitely, platforms like Uncut, like really gave me the opportunity to share my voice. Um, during George Floyd, I was, I really felt like I was drowning with like emotions. Like I didn't know how to process things. One day I was angry, one day I was crying, one day I was just like perplexed and just trying to like find, not like comfort where I'm like comfortable with it, but comfort within myself. You no, know, Mike, you've been really passionate about uh, voter, combating voter suppression and dealing with voter registration. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that, but. Yeah, so right now, I mean, it started off as like, I've been wanting to get mostly just my friends to vote. Just my friends. Cause, like, I can't have everybody else vote if my own friends not voting. Like, this is my first time being able to vote. So, you know, I'm going to vote like in, in like the major election. So I think that there is, that there's so many elections that you can vote in. Like people don't, Really, aren't really like informed on that too, but um, my my main thing has just been I'm in the state of North Carolina right now, so I'm from Florida, though. so being able to have like to have an absentee ballot is like kind of difficult to get because you have to mail it, you have to get it mailed to you and then get it mailed back, and there's kind of like stuff going wrong with um, the U.S. Postal Service right now. So I think like uh, the best way to do it would be to just register that the state you're in right now, register for the state that you're in to vote there. And, but like, I'm really, I'm really passionate about it because like one, one of the um, people I can like really say that I can like model, model my like, some of the, like some of the things the way I do after is like Tyron Matthews and Tyron Matthews like getting kids all over New Orleans to vote. Like he getting his teammates ready to vote. Like he getting the um, city of Kansas City. He getting to Kansas City which is where he plays at right now. Like he getting people registered. And like I want to be able to do that. Like I, I just I've been sending um like the register ballots. You know you can do it online. Like I've been sending them to my teammates, uh, people that I know, just like, trying to get people to vote because it's that important. Like it's so important, and people don't realize that it is so important. Some people feel like their voices aren't heard. Some people feel like they have they have no room, you know, to to vote. Some people can't vote though. Like you've been to prison, like, you can't vote. And that's like another um, form of oppression in my opinion. But um, just long story short, I know I'm going off, but I, th I just think that it's important to make sure everybody knows that voting is important and your vote does count. And let's vote this fall and bring your friend. It's a voting party. Like, <laughs> you gotta vote. Uh, my friend Wanye Thomas, he goes to Georgia Tech, mm -hmm. and um, they they canceled all student athlete acti activities that day just to let the student athletes be able to vote. And they they um, fans were kind of upset about it because they were like, "Well, they don't need to worry about politics; they just need to play ball." Like, and that's 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 stupid. <laughs> like, that's the thing. I that's, think people fail to realize that there's a black light live life like under the person who entertains you like whether they're a singer um a performer an athlete um i feel like a lot of people associate black people with only being entertainers of some uh form but like they are living they have other interests and passions and they should be able to like carry out any rights that they have and do them to the fullest, fullest extent yeah. De yeah, definitely. Because even when I meet new people, I don't mention that I'm an athlete, especially now I'm at UNC. Like, I don't mention it because as soon as you say I'm a student athlete, they just encompass you and be like, oh, so your whole life is surrounded by sports and you, you just do sports. And that's it. I'm like, no, like, I'm so much more than just an athlete. Like, I do so many things outside of that. Like, being an athlete is my platform. And yeah, I'm a student. But anyway, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So like I barely play football, like, <laughs> like two hours a day. Like. Yeah, and I, I think that the, the most important and encouraging and really inspiring thing that I've seen um, specifically dealing with uh, our team, with the football team, is that um, sort of around the time that I started doing my writing and doing all these other things that I saw other people starting to do stuff on our team. I mean, you know, Mike is – a tremendous photographer and there's a lot of guys on our team that do photography like dj and austin do photography as well and uh, taman is you know one of the most talented artists i've ever seen and to be able to see him 
happy and enjoy and enjoying what he's doing because for a long time he kept it secret and uh to be able to have him openly and proudly display that stuff is really encouraging and uh zulu uh lesene Ture is you know he's making music and he's he's really good and i'm excited to see where he goes and how he continues to do that and i think that that sort of cultural shift is um, serves as a microcosm for what's happening at a larger scale. Cause I'm seeing it not only in football teams, but basketball teams and women's soccer teams and softball teams across the country that people are realizing and understanding that, you know, having a social media platform, having a platform in general, that they are able and allowed to show what else they enjoy. And I think that that, that bridges the gap a little bit because when, you are showing yourself as more than an athlete that maybe there will come a point in the next few years or so where you can proudly say that you're a softball player and they will immediately recognize you as more than that just be, just based off what they've seen in previous years. And I think that as we continue to move forward, that this conversation is here to say, we are here to stay and we will always be more than athletes and we will continue to push for the causes that we care about because it is our right to do so and we are able to do that and i think that the most encouraging thing is that this conversation hasn't gone away you know um it's been it's been a few months since george floyd happened and people are still shouting his name in the streets and um as horrifying as unfortunate it was that we had to witness someone get murdered in order to wake people up i think people are fully awake now and leading into the election period I think the conversation is here to stay and I just want to thank all of you again for your time. Uh, you know, this was again enlightening and informative and I really appreciate it.